Welcome in to today's edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you join me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. Uh, this is our special Iowa caucus edition. We're going to spend our entire time together breaking down the results of what happened and what Iowans told the country last night. As predicted, Donald Trump easily won Iowa. It was a quick one-two punch, and he knocked his opponents out in the opening round of the presidential nomination process. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis landing in number two with Nikki Haley a close third. And now we shift our focus to New Hampshire as the Granite State will hold the first presidential primary Tuesday of next week. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Let's start with President Donald Trump as he spoke after learning of his uh, overwhelming and easy victory. Well, I want to thank everybody. This has been some period of time, and most importantly, we want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. What a turnout, what a crowd. And I really think this is time now for everybody, our country, to come together. We want to come together. Uh, whether it's Republican or Democrat or liberal or conservative, it would be so nice if we could come together and straighten out the world and straighten out the problems and straighten out all of the death and destruction that we're witnessing. That's practically never been like this. It's uh, just so important. And I want to make that a very big part of our message. We're going to come together. It's going to happen soon, too. It's going to happen soon. We're going to rescue our economy. We're going to save our economy. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. There was never a greater economy, and now we don't. And when you look at what's happened with inflation, inflation is destroying. You know, they call it a country killer. Going back hundreds of years, Germany, countries that had big inflation are dead. They become dead countries. We have to stop that immediately. And we want peace through strength. Russia would have never attacked Ukraine, would have never done it. Putin and I get along fine. We get along very well. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. The fake news, which I would, if the fake news would become real and honest news, 90% of our problems in this country would be solved. They would be solved. So Russia would have never attacked. Israel would have never been attacked. The Ukraine situation is so horrible. The Israeli situation is so horrible. What's happened? And uh, we're going to get them solved. We're going to get them solved very fast. So we're going to put America first. We're going to make America great again. Again, Iowa, we love you. You are going to, oh, you just go out and buy larger tractors in more land. Don't worry about it. And uh, to all of the people standing behind me and all of the people in this room and so many great politicians and great dignitaries and friends, I just want to thank you all. This is a very special night. And this is the first because the big night is going to be in November when we take back our country. And truly, we do make our country great again. Thank you very much, everybody. Great honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, President Donald Trump speaking with his uh, uh, very enthusiastic crowd of supporters in Iowa. He cruised to this easy victory last night to lead off the contest in the 2024 Republican presidential nominating calendar. The Fox News decision desk made the call for Trump at 8.31 p.m. Eastern Time. This was literally a half hour after the caucuses got underway across the Hawkeye State. The former president's fast and easy win in Iowa gives him a crucial uh, early victory in his bid to return to the White House. 
More than two hours after Trump's victory was called, the Fox News decision desk projected that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis would edge former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley for a distant second place behind Trump. Now, you know, this was the, the, the contest really last night was for second place because we knew that Donald Trump was going to easily win. The question was, who was going to be in second? And in recent weeks, Governor Nikki Haley's campaign did a pretty good job convincing people that it was going to be her, that she had the momentum on her side. Ron DeSantis, of course, has put a lot of effort into Iowa. He took great pride in the fact that he had organized all 99 counties, had great uh, ground forces. Uh, Back in December, he is predicting he'd even win. In recent weeks, he kind of cooled that a bit, just uh, saying that he was going to do well. And then over the past couple of weeks, uh, and and with the uh, latest polls from the Des Moines Register, suggesting that Nikki Haley had surpassed him. Well, that didn't exactly happen, but it was a close call. It was a close call. DeSantis, in a speech uh, to his supporters, said, they threw everything but the kitchen sink at us. Because of your support, in spite of all that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa, he said. He barely got it punched. Uh, Haley addressed her supporters soon after DeSantis spoke, once again framing the nomination as a two-person contest between herself and Donald Trump. Uh, She said, when you look at how we're doing in New Hampshire, in South Carolina and beyond, I can safely say tonight Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. You had a multimillionaire biotech entrepreneur and first-time political candidate, Vivek Ramaswamy, who relentlessly campaigned across Iowa and was predicting just yesterday there was going to be a big surprise last night. It didn't happen. He suspended his campaign after finishing a distant fourth place. Ramaswamy said he called Trump to congratulate him, said he would attend a rally with uh, President Trump in New Hampshire next Tuesday. Uh, In his statement, he said there needs to be an America first candidate in this race going forward. He will have my full endorsement for the presidency, Trump campaign senior advisor Chris LaCivita posted to social media a photo of the former president backstage at his Iowa campaign caucus uh, headquarters, along with his son Donald Trump uh, Jr. and, and other family members uh, giving the thumbs up sign in front of a TV tune to Fox News with the Chiron Trump projected to win Iowa caucus. Heading into uh, last night's caucuses, Trump, of course, had a massive lead in just about every single public opinion poll that had been published. His victory last night was the largest margin in the history of Iowa's Republican presidential caucuses, not to mention it was the coldest <laughs> the coldest caucus in the uh, history as well. He easily surpassed the, the previous winning margin of 12.8% set in 1988 by the late Senator Bob Dole with uh, nearly all of the ballots counted late last night. Trump stood at 51%. And you know I've been telling you for the last week or so that the question wasn't if Trump was going to win, but if he was going to win with 50% or more. And he did. He did. Uh, Trump, you may remember, narrowly lost the Iowa caucuses to Senator Ted Cruz back in 2016 who assembled a, a, a great get-out-the-vote uh, ground game uh, that, that allowed him to win. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz, as you know, did not go very far after that, though. La Civita emphasized that the campaign, Trump's campaign, that is, put an emphasis on volunteer support. He told Fox News last week that they know the area, they know who's caucusing in the area, and they'll be following up with them making sure they vote. Our focus and our premium has been on people, and we think it's going to bear fruit in a big way, and that it did. Uh, veteran Iowa-based Republican strategist Jimmy Sinners told uh, the media that Trump won across all demographics. He said, you look at the northwest Iowa, the most conservative part of the state, evangelical voters, he won those too. You look at suburban population centers, he won those. You look at the rural counties that he spent the last few weeks visiting, he won, and he won big in those counties, he said. DeSantis, who was convincingly 
reelected to a second term as Florida governor just 14 months ago was once considered a clear alternative to Trump, but uh, that did not turn out to be the case in Iowa after a series of campaign setbacks over the summer and and, uh, just sort of got a late start. Ron DeSantis just never has completely gotten off of the ground. Uh, Heading into the Iowa uh, caucuses, DeSantis was betting that his uh, ground game in Iowa, which he had put together a pretty formidable game uh, with uh, hundreds of thousands of door knocks, uh, phone calls, text messages uh, that were primarily being done by his uh, never back down pack, thought that that would carry him across the finish line. It just did not happen. DeSantis who made uh, he made Iowa really his major focus, uh, predicted that we're going to do well on Monday. And, you know, I guess the fact that he uh, ultimately won second place and did not let Nikki Haley wrestle that away from him, I, I guess in that respect it was a successful evening for Ron DeSantis. The AP and news, uh, news networks projected Trump's victory as people were literally still casting ballots uh, the caucus that I attended in Dallas County, and I'm going to tell you a little more about that in just a few minutes. Got to meet some great people there last night. But I was up in a media area, and the caucus was literally, they were uh, they were down kind of call and roll, getting organized. Uh, they, they had three different precincts that they combined together there. We started getting the, the alerts that the race had been called. The folks down on the uh, on the floor of this, it was like a, a, a huge event type center. I don't think any of them had any idea until you started seeing their phones coming out of their pockets and everybody was looking at their phones and you knew that they were getting those alerts as well. The uh, DeSantis campaign did not like it. They blasted the media. Spokesman Andrew uh, Romeo charge that the early call was absolutely outrageous, he said, claiming that the media is in the tank for Trump, and this is the most egregious example yet. Now, I don't think anybody's going to argue that the media is in the tank for Donald Trump. I mean, you even had CNN, and, and, and it wasn't just Fox. It wasn't just Newsmax. I mean, actually, the New York Times was uh, pretty much followed Fox News as one of the early... Uh, media entities that call the race. Uh, Haley, of course, finishing narrowly behind DeSantis. She um, surpassed DeSantis in some polls and, uh, again, was really thinking that she was going to uh, get second place here that would send her over to New Hampshire where she's been spending a lot of time and, and a lot of money. Got the endorsement of Governor Chris Sununu over there. We'll see. We're told that Ron DeSantis is pretty much skipping New Hampshire and headed straight to South Carolina. Trump has, of course, repeatedly blasted his rivals for months. He sounded a little conciliatory in his victory speech last night. He said, I want to thank Ron and Nikki for having a good time together. We're all having a good time together. I think they both actually did very well, and he said that Ramaswamy, quote, did a hell of a job. Pointing to all three rivals, Trump added, they're very smart people, very capable people. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. I'd love to get your comments on what you thought about the results of the Iowa caucus. You can text me on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-5639. Better yet, give me a quick call and Leave me a message. We'll air those as time permits. And your your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. You thinking about buying a new vehicle? Well, let me, uh, let me ask you to keep your money in our community. Keep your money here in the upstate. And when you go to Furman Ford in Lawrence, that's exactly what will happen. You'll be buying from a locally owned dealership. They put their name on the sign because their name is on the line with every single business transaction. You know, large corporations have never been more powerful. New technologies like AI are changing the game even more. That's why we need to support our local local community businesses like Furman Ford. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, 
or if you need your service, and it doesn't have to be a Ford, they, they service all makes and models, and you're not going to have to wait weeks to get your, uh, your vehicle serviced at Furman Ford. Let me encourage you to visit them. Uh, you can find them online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. So who was the typical Iowa voter at last night's caucus? I attended one of the larger caucuses. It was in West Des Moines. That's uh, Dallas County, which is one of a, a few counties that makes up Des Moines. They had combined three precincts and had, I'm going to estimate, four to 500 people there. And I'm told that that was one of the larger caucuses in the state and, and especially in the area. So think about that. You know, going into this, the media was trying to convince people that a lot of people may stay home. And there's still some. We, we don't have the final numbers uh, or, or comparisons yet. Uh, there's still some who are, who are arguing that this was a low turnout for, for Iowa. But I got to tell you, where I was last night, there was a, a room full of uh, four to 500 people who braved the coldest caucus weather in history, and the cold did not bother them. Many of them told me that this, this is just Iowa weather, they said. We bundle up and we get out, particularly for something as important as this. Uh, the meeting began with speeches for attendees, trying to convince them to vote for their favorite candidates. Uh, upon arriving, I was told that Nikki Haley had decided to attend this rather, uh, rather large caucus. And in fact, the meeting was delayed at the, uh, a bit as they were waiting for her arrival. She did not, though. She never attended. Not sure what happened there. There never was an explanation. Um, President Trump's younger son, Eric, was there, saying that he was there as a proud son of a great man. I am here as a son today, and I've got a father who's fought for the last eight years. He's fought tirelessly against the deep state, against the system that's weaponized absolutely everything against our family. And his only, frankly, motivation is the little kids that I'm seeing right there. He loves this country. He's the last person that needs to go out and do this. His life would be exponentially better if he wasn't in politics. He's probably the one person who can say that. But every single day I see him, I see him you know, open up a paper and you see that the United States is 30th in the world in terms of education, and our military is being run down, and we've got a total invasion on the southern border, and kids are getting killed with fentanyl, and our economy is, you know, excuse the language, going to, you know, a, you have inflation that's greatly outpacing wage growth in this country. Everything's more expensive. Um, you know, go out, buy two by four right now, it's 10 bucks. Go out, buy eggs versus three years ago, they're up. 70%. I mean, everything is going wrong, and we've lost our respect around the world. Um, and I just promise you, um, I'll never start, stop fighting. Uh, my father will never stop fighting, and we will make this country great again, and we will make this country incredibly proud. So, Iowa, we really love you. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, we look forward to a great victory. Thank you, guys. Eric Trump, uh, youngest son of President Donald Trump. Others were there for various reasons, but they all were there because they believed it was their patriotic duty. It was an interesting and fun evening. I got to meet a lot of people. I got to hear their stories. One of the more compelling stories was that of David, who says he attended the caucus to support Donald Trump so that he could get the economy back on track. David explained that he's currently unemployed and says that Bidenomics caused him to lose his job. Well, ironically, this is actually the first time I've ever caucused. The uh, first time I ever voted was actually in the 2016 election where I voted for Trump. And in 2020, I also voted for Trump because, well, I mean, it was either Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton. It's not exactly a big brain decision, but... Uh, this is the first time I've caucused because, unfortunately, at the moment I am unemployed because Bidenomics stole my job. Basically, Joe Biden has made this economy and the value of our dollar so little that millions of Americans, even ones who don't agree with me that vote Democrat or whatever else, they literally do not have the freedom of choice with their dollar to choose between having things they'd like to have or, you know, 
being able to buy certain necessities or certain, you know, uh, luxuries that they'd like to have, and they have to choose between gas, food, and a mortgage or rent, and they can't really afford anything else. And because lack of sales, I lost my job. Wow, what a story. And, you know, I just really felt for this young man as he stood there telling me that he was there out of necessity. He's there because not only is he concerned about our country, he's experienced it firsthand. Bidenomics is absolutely not working for David. Now, the other thing about David, too, though, was he was one of the younger people there last night. I'll have to say that I'll I'll bet that if you averaged the ages of people who were in, were in attendance, I'm going to say it was probably pushing 60 or so. Uh, David was one of the younger ones in attendance. He says he believes that there are more people his age, though, who are scared and who are ready for a change. Well, I'm 35 years old. A lot of people say I don't look it, but being 35, I know a lot of people who are in my, well, I'm a libertarian. I, I, I identify as a libertarian, more conservative libertarian. I voted Trump twice. Um, you know, there are a lot of people in my camp who have seen what Trump has done in the past and what he actually did during his tenure as president for the first time, and he accomplished a lot, a lot of things you can't deny. And unfortunately, with all this election meddling and lawfare going on in Florida and D.C. and all these other states that are trying to keep him off of the GOP primary ballot, um, you know, it, when you when you look at everything that is going wrong around our country, you know, inflation, the economy, mass illegal immigration that is forcing Texas to basically defend their own state, making making it le illegal for, in their state to arrest illegal immigrants and deport them immediately, and then also uh, unleashing their national guard to the border to keep federal border patrol agents from allowing more mass uh, illegal immigration. It really shows you the kind of climate we're in right now to where people are scared, people are fed up, and you know people want, some, want a change, but a lot of people are voting out of fear and worry instead of what is right and what is, you know, the, and what is, with the writing on the wall. Again, I just uh, felt for David and his story. Uh, interesting enough, too, his dad was there with him, and his dad was standing over to the side with a red MAGA cap, so I assumed that his dad was a Donald Trump supporter as well. But as I started talking with him, he actually had supported Ron DeSantis. Uh, I didn't quite figure that one out. I also got to meet Richard, who is a retired veteran. Uh, he was wearing a Trump cap and was uh, made it very clear who he supported. He attended the caucus, he said, to vote for Trump because he believes that President Trump got a raw deal. And he wants Trump to work on several specific issues that are important to him. Uh, support Donald Trump. I think he got a raw deal in his uh, presidency. I think he exposed a bunch of corruption within the government. And I'm hoping that he can get back in there and straighten it up a little bit. What's the most important issue that you'd like to see him to go to work on? Well, there's more than one. Okay. Corruption, the budget, and uh, the border. And those w issues were sort of a common theme among a lot of people that I was able to speak with uh, there at the caucus last night, too. Let me tell you about Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. Portions of today's show are made possible because of Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition. Over three years ago now, I wanted to lose some weight. More importantly, I wanted to get healthy. And with the help of Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition, I was able to lose 30 pounds pretty quickly and been able to maintain that weight now for over three years. If this is a year that you're going to get healthy, if one of your New Year's resolutions was, I'm going to lose weight, Maybe you haven't gotten started on that yet. Now's the time. Let me encourage you to call 864-252-4925. Uh, go ahead and get on their schedule. Sit down with them. Have your first consultation. And I promise you, this is going to be a phone call that you'll never regret. Uh, because within just a few weeks, you two can be talking about losing 10, 20, 30 pounds or more. I have uh, listeners who 
tell their story of losing 100, 125, 135 pounds, more importantly, feeling better, being able to sleep better, being able to focus better, being able to do things that maybe they haven't been able to do in a long, long time. You can find them online at myphdweightloss.com, PhD Weight Loss Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Now, the next couple of folks that I met uh, are my favorites. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Diane and Garrett attended the caucuses because, again, like many of them, they believed it was their duty as citizens. Diane attended specifically to vote for Donald Trump. But as we were talking, she was surprised to learn that her husband <laughs> hadn't voted for Trump. He admitted to her, with me standing there with him recording this, that he actually had voted for Ron DeSantis. you got to listen to this one. To vote for Trump. So you're a Trump supporter. <laughs> Big time. If, I just pointed out to my husband, if you look around, look at, I'm elderly, <laughs> look at the elderly, as opposed to the young kids here. So, yeah, we come out. This isn't bad out. The wind isn't blowing. Yeah. Well, we're split on our vote because you got one for DeSantis. And one did for... you go for DeSantis? Yes, I did. Oh, dear. We have secrets. I <laughs> guess. <laughs> yeah. We um, saw Trump um, at 16 when he won, big guy. But um, I'm very impressed with him, and one of my big reasons will surprise you is the first day that Biden was in office, and he swept away everything Trump did and took the oil lines down, and 800 workers were unemployed. I knew then for Trump if he ran again. I love that when he said we had a split vote. She looked at him. If you could have seen the look on her face like you did what? She had she didn't have a clue. She had no clue whatsoever that her husband <laughs> had voted for Ron DeSantis. Um, David was one of the 100 plus volunteers who organized these three combined Dallas County precincts for one of the larger caucus meetings in the area. Uh, I took a minute to talk with David, uh, and he explained the caucus process, and and he predicted that Trump would win, as it turned out he did. Uh, He incorrectly predicted that Haley would probably be second, and described Ron DeSantis as a person without a home. So a caucus like this one is a unique one because we actually took three very large districts in West Des Moines and put them all in the same facility. This is a very nice facility and they weren't going to put it to uh, use with just one so they did three large caucuses here. Three large precincts all mixed up into one. And so what that means is that you got to have a whole bunch of volunteers to run that. Earlier we had a whole bunch of people at these tables, registered people in. Um, with that many precincts all coming at the same time, you got to make sure and go through the whole line. Every single person who gets here by 7 o'clock needs to get in, even if they are still in line at that time. Um, in order for that to run, you got a bunch of people inside making sure it all gets set up properly. And then uh, and you have to accommodate for the candidates who come too. We actually had scheduled to have Nikki Haley come speak on her own behalf, uh, but Eric Trump was just on stage a bit ago talking for his dad. And so we have a lot of people here, and, uh, and it takes a lot of volunteers to, to run this well. Would you uh, want to make a prediction on how things turn out tonight? Uh, I feel pretty confident that Trump is going to take the lead, but I'm surprised at how many Nikki Haley supporters I've seen. A lot of love Nikki Haley stickers, so I would not be surprised at all if she takes second place. Um, a lot of people look at Ron DeSantis and they say that he's got the flavor of Trump, but he's not Trump, so it's going to be hard for him to beat Trump in a race. But also, because he's so similar to Trump, people who don't like Trump don't like him either. And so in many cases, he's kind of like a man without a home. Because if you like Trump, you're going to vote for Trump. And if you don't like Trump, you're going to look for someone like Nikki Haley. Or you're going to look for a total fringe candidate like Vivek. Personally, I, I like Vivek, but, but Trump's my guy. And overall, as the evening proved, uh, that's what most people did agree on, that Trump was their guy. 51% of Iowans agreed that Trump was their guy. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to get your comments. Uh, Send me a quick text on the Furman Ford text line. Uh, Do you think that Iowa got it right? And do you think that this is going to propel President Trump to a victory as he heads into uh, New Hampshire next week? 
Love to get your feedback on the Furman Ford text line. Uh, speaking of the Furman Ford text line, Jeff wrote, I just wanted to say thank you for going to Iowa and giving us updates on the uh, caucuses. Stay warm, safe, and have a safe trip home. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's a little bit harder to stay warm. I tell you, I've never been so cold in my life. <laughs> never. Uh, Susan uh, writes, in light of the Biden administration totally lacking any sense of humor, right down to the DOT sign policy, she's referencing a story I told you about yesterday where the uh, DOT has come up with a new rules and regulation, over 1,100 pages telling states what they can and cannot put on those traffic signs that you see like on 85. Uh, she says, I've come up with a new Trump slogan, Mala. M-A-L-A, Mala, Make America Laugh Again. Good idea, Susan. Tony says, Joey, not sure if you heard Tucker about vice president. He didn't say no, and speculation and rumor is that he could be a vice presidential candidate. Talking about Tucker Carlson. And uh, Jennifer says, hey, Joey, I hope you're still kicking in Iowa. I hope I'm still kicking, too, and not yet frozen. I thought Trump's speech uh, Monday night was gracious and well done. He had a great victory. I was glad to see Doug Burgum on the stage with him. I'd wondered if Trump might so select him as his vice president. Our text of encouragement today, when life challenges you, don't give up, hold your head up high, and have faith that Almighty is always with you, and everything will work out in the end. God bless. Thank you for that. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line as well, 864-477-5639. Leave a quick message. Send me a Email joey at joeyhudson.com. So what's next? As we shift our focus to New Hampshire next week, what uh, what's coming up? And by the way, I'll be headed to New Hampshire so that I can uh, give you the most up-to-date news from there as well. Portions of today's show brought to you by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Are you tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff who have absolutely no appliance knowledge? Well, you're not going to get that when you head on over to Pickens and you you talk with my friends Jeff and Johnny at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. It's where I buy all of my appliances. They make it easy. You can walk through their warehouse of about 11,000 square feet, typically with 1,500 or more appliances ready for you. They have uh, uh, an A-plus better business bureau. They have nearly perfect reviews on Google. And I promise you they have the knowledge to help you choose the right appliance for you and your family. Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens, online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. So top Republicans congratulated former President Donald Trump on his Iowa victory, with many urging the party to finish the primaries and unite around him to defeat Joe Biden in November. Calling it a massive Trump victory, House GOP Chair Elise Stefanik wrote on X that Trump is the party's nominee and will defeat President Biden this November to hashtag Save America. Ms. Stefanik said, uh, cue the journo and liberal meltdown. Senator Lindsey Grady, uh, Graham on X saying that it's clear to me that former President Trump is the GOP nominee and will eventually be the 47th president of the United States. He said the Republican Party is fortunate to have so many good candidates, but for all practical purposes, this primary is over. Dr. Ben Carson, a former Trump cabinet secretary, says it's time for the rest of the field to support former President Trump and concentrate the party's resources on defeating President Biden or whoever else the Democrats try to sneak in at the last minute. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich described the results in Iowa as the people's victory, adding that Trump is the nominee. He said, get over it. There's no candidacy for number two. Trump is not just a candidate. Trump is the leader of a nationwide movement to take back power from the establishment. Donald Trump Jr. offered the same message as other Republicans shortly after the Iowa caucus. Uh, he writing on X, now let's end this nonsense and go after the insanity that is today's Democrat Party. Enough is enough. It's time to put America first for a change, he said. Senator Rick Scott echoed those remarks, urging the GOP to unite behind Donald Trump. He said, can we stop pretending this is an actual primary race? and get to the business of defeating Joe Biden? House Speaker uh, Mike Johnson congratulated Trump. Uh, he uh, stopped short of urging the party to, reunite, uh, to, to unite around 
the Republican frontrunner, but did say congratulations to Donald Trump for a resounding victory in Iowa. Today, Republican voters turned out amid harsh conditions and showed their resolve to bring an end to the failed economic and open border policies of Joe Biden. Uh, Biden's campaign, by the way, started fundraising off of Trump's victory. President Biden's campaign uh, sent out a, a series of texts and emails to supporters soon after results were announced, saying that his uh, re-election team uh, w- was, gonna, was warning their supporters that President Trump would engage in vile attacks, endless lies, and massive spending if he secured the Republican nomination. The email said the Iowa results are in, and it's clear. Donald Trump is the official frontrunner for the 2024 Republican presidency nomination. We need to work even harder now, Joe Biden said. Before the caucuses began, Biden's campaign announced that it had raised $97 million in the fourth quarter of 2023 and maintains $117 million in cash on hand. Think about that for a minute. $117 million dollars sitting in an account for a political campaign. There'll be a billion or more spent during this election cycle. A majority of Republican presidential candidates uh, have not published their fourth quarter fundraising yet, but former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley recently announced that her campaign had raised $24 million in the October to December period with $14.5 million on hand. Speaking with uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton on his radio show, Keeping It Real, President Biden said he's running for re-election because of his, of his potential opponent's anti-democratic statements. He said the things that Trump is saying, Trump is saying that they're just off the wall, Biden uh, told Sharpton. He's the most anti-democratic president in American history, Biden said. The things he's saying, and he means them. He's talking about he's running to get revenge on people. It's just outrageous things, he said. This comes as a new ABC News Ipsos poll, finding that Joe Biden's approval rating has slumped to a new low of 33%. ABC News confirmed that it was the lowest approval rating since President George W. Bush's 2006 to 2008. A January 14th CBS News poll found that former President Trump maintains a two-point advantage over Joe Biden. So off to New Hampshire it is, January 23rd. Republicans in New Hampshire will head to the polls. According to the Real Clear Politics poll averaging, former President Trump, surprise, 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 (laughs) enjoys a comfortable 14-point lead. Uh, That's the latest WHDW-TV Emerson poll. Highlighted that the GOP frontrunner had 44% support, followed by Nikki Haley with 28%, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis 7%, Vivek Ramaswamy 4%. Of course, he dropped out of the race, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Again, we'll be there to tell you all about it. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose the weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. And if you haven't joined our mailing list, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. Thanks for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I'm back again tomorrow. Uh, but between now and then, send me your text on the Firm and Ford text line, 864-477-5639. Keep your emails coming to joey at joeyhudson.com. Remember, folks, God's got this. He's still in control.